Hi there, my name is Katherine Koster. I'm the Communications Director for SWAP USA. Um, and I'm really excited to be joined with Susie Q, the Director of Policy and Industry Relations at the Free Speech Coalition, who is going to talk to us and give us a really brief, um, you know, a really, really jam-packed debriefing of Prop 60, um, a bill that has been introduced by Michael Einstein, a ballot initiative um, in the state of California uh, that would uh, have very, very substantial impact on the adult industry in California. And I'm going to let Susie be the person who um, explains uh, exactly how this will affect the adult industry in California. Are you ready, Susie? I'm so ready. Fabulous. Um, Thank you so much for having me, um, first of all. Uh, I've been a longtime member of SWAP, and uh, it's very, very exciting to see um, these sex worker rights organizations that are signing on to oppose Prop 60 uh, and, uh, and fight this because it, it is part of the larger uh, uh, strategy, I think, of how we dismantle criminalization in all of its forms, criminalization and whorephobia and stigma of our work um, you know, across the board. So my work on Prop 60 has been very, very intense uh, over the past several months. I wrote about Prop 60 in my column, The Whore Next Door for the San Francisco Weekly um, about a year ago in October when it was just a twinkle in Michael Weinstein's eye. Uh, but it has come very far since then and the opposition coalition has been really incredible. Um, one of my, my first days on the job working with the Free Speech Coalition, we were at the Republican Cal the California Republican Convention. We went on to the California Democratic Executive Board meeting and subsequent clubs since then. So Prop 60, uh, first of all, I want to make sure that everyone knows that we are, um, I'm going to go ahead and go into screen sharing really quick and just uh, introduce you before I dive into the PowerPoint, introduce you to our, our website, stop60.com, where you can go to uh, get all of the information as it becomes updated um, about Prop 60. So we are fortunate to uh, have tripartisan opposition in this day and age and in this election cycle. How do you get Democrats, Republicans, Libertarians, HIV organizations, doctors, workers, human rights organizations, civil rights organizations to all agree on something? And guess what? It's the adult industry. Um, we're also uh, our opposition is supported by seven of the main editorial boards in the state, the East Bay Times, the Sacramento Bee, uh, the San Francisco Chronicle, the San Jose Mercury News. They all stand with our workers and say no on Prop 60. Um, so that's, know that going in. And that has been a huge, uh, you know, beacon of hope, I would say, in how we are thinking about this campaign. Because, you know, we are up against a lot of stigma, people, and, and the way the, the uh, proposition is worded is not in our favor at all, right? It's unfortunately titled the Safer Sex in the Adult Industry Act. Uh, now, when an uninformed voter looks at that, that may sound like a great idea, right? But I am here to talk to you today about why uh, Prop 60 is bad for sex workers and bad for California. Um, so let's go ahead and dive in. I'm going to show you my swap webinar. Here we go. Okay. Let's see that. Okay. Um, so Prop 60 wants you to think that it's about condoms and safer sex in the adult industry but it's actually about harassment. It's actually about incentivizing lawsuits uh, of a marginalized population. So under Prop 60, California will become the first state in the nation to allow and incentivize any resident to sue a worker for how they do their job. Now, Prop 60 will put an already marginalized workforce as you all know, sex workers do not get a fair shake in this world, um, will put an already marginalized workforce at greater risk of harassment and violence by allowing any resident to gain access to workers' legal names and home addresses through uninsurable lawsuits. Um, now, that lawsuit is triggered uh, when a condom is not visible in an adult scene. Uh, now, if 
Cal OSHA, the standards board designated to regulate workplace safety in the state. If Cal OSHA dismisses the claim, Prop 60 will allow that resident to sue anyway and reap 25% of that settlement. The rest goes to the state. Um, and the way the law is written, it takes those lawsuits directly into discovery. So at the discovery stage, legal names and home addresses become part of the public record. And for a workforce such as ours that already faces alarming rates of discrimination, stalkers, violence, murder, this, this cannot stand. Um, Adult workers have tirelessly spoken out against Prop 60. Uh, you've probably seen on uh, social media how many of uh, our adult industry workers, as well as our allies, have changed their Twitter avatar to have this No on 60 uh, logo and have you know, done podcasts, uh, are promoting this No Prop 60 message on their websites. Uh, it's really turning into a movement. Um, now, for those who are not for those who don't care about us, I should say, um, there's also just the, the, the very real reality that Prop 60 will cost the state millions. Um, not only could, will it financially devastate hundreds of small business owners, many of whom are women, uh, POC, and LGBT, LGBTQ folks, uh, you know, we know the sex industry and the way in which the economy has worked post-2008 has uh, both allowed for many people to to enter the industry and make a life you know such as myself i you know entered the industry in 2008 and i have been able to be a small business owner uh through the adult industry and i simply cannot afford a lawsuit like this um but not to mention the state should not be spending this kind of money on this kind of legislation um moreover Prop 60 does, it purports to keep us safe and be about safer sex in the adult industry. But what it will actually do is decrease our options. Um, the proponents have railed against increasing access to important HIV prevention methods, such as PrEP. Um, I'm sure some of you are fairly uh, familiar with pre-exposure prophylaxis, Truvada, um, but Prop 60 is a one-size-fits-all piece of legislation, and we know that for public health and safer sex, one size does not fit all. Uh, like everyone else, workers in the adult industry should have access to all the options in the prevention toolkit and be empowered to make use of what fits their needs. Um, in the adult industry, we've had zero onset HIV transmissions in the self-regulated industry for 12 years. Our testing protocols and that we test every 14 days for seven different STIs, on those sets, we haven't seen a transmission of HIV in 12 years. And that's that's something to brag about. That's pretty amazing. And so it's very disheartening that this organization that's the proponents of Prop 60, AIDS Healthcare Foundation, doesn't want to work with us to try to increase the sexual health and safety of our workers and the public at large. You think that with the social media reach and the track record that the adult industry has, that maybe we could be working hand in hand to uh, attack the problem of STI transmission in America, but instead they are wasting millions of dollars on legislation like Prop 60. Um, so let's move forward. So, okay, how are performers put at risk? The Yes, on Prop 60 side, really wants to say that performers will not be at risk under Prop 60 only, and this was hilarious yesterday in a uh, um, debate on KQED with the Yes on 60 side, they called me um, a faux performer. They want to caution everyone to listening uh, to faux performers like myself and uh, Ella Darling. And basically what we have been saying that the way the law is written, um, anyone with a financial interest in the adult film will be liable. And so they want, they like to say the performers will not be liable, provided that such individuals have no financial interest in the adult film and are not adult film producers. Now, I imagine many of you listening know that in this day and age, performers benefit financially from their films in many, many ways. I am not a 
content producer in the way that most people would think about it, but do I make my own clips? Absolutely. Do I participate in affiliate programs? So when I shoot a scene for kink.com or the crash pad series, they give me an individual unique link that I can then promote on my own social media and get money from folks who use that link. Absolutely. I do that content sharing, making actually my own clips on occasion. Absolutely. Having my own website. These are uh, webcamming. That's not on this thing, but um, webcamming is absolutely uh, a means of distribution and production and would, be, would, you know, that's a direct financial interest. So had the proponents of Prop 60 perhaps spoken with anyone from the adult industry, we could say, hey, if you're not wanting to target performers, you can't have this kind of language in there. But it's in there and you can't pick and choose how, you know, which part of the law you enforce. So under Prop 60, performers like myself who have financial interest. That includes webcamming couples who are webcamming from the privacy of their own home, monogamous married people. There's no exemption for anything like that. There's no exemption even for an injured worker. So say the worst case scenario happens. You could, and you're injured on an adult set, you either get sick or you fall and break your leg. There's still, you could be sued under Prop 60 because Prop 60 is not about keeping people safe. It's about making it available for people to sue adult workers and put a bounty on our heads. Um, so here's the lawsuit process. Um, as I said before, Prop 60 subverts the Kalosha complaint process, enabling any California resident to file a lawsuit if Kalosha does not pursue a claim, undoing nearly a decade of work with Kalosha, with the Kalosha Standards Board. Um, in February, we had a monumental success in that the Kalosha Standards Board decided to listen to us for the first time and since then and actually let the real stakeholders of this industry uh, have a say in the regulations that, that regulate the industry. And we've been at meetings ever since February uh, doing that hard work to work alongside Cal OSHA to have our voices at the center of that conversation and Prop 60 now will come in and undo all of that work, making it pointless, worthless, and a waste of tax dollars. Um, so regard, as, as hard as that is on our hearts, you know, as, as sex workers who have been doing this work, it's also a waste of government money and time, and it's just not something the state needs. So what are performers saying about Prop 60? I think we all know that if you really want to help a marginalized population, you have to ask them what they need and you have to listen to them when they tell you. That has not been done with Prop 60. Um, at any given time, there are only about 1,800 active adult film performers, and we are reaching that critical mass of people who are actively engaging in the No on 60. We have about 90% of the performer population actively campaigning against Prop 60. So that tells you something. I mean, if I weren't in the adult industry and I knew that, that would be enough to get my vote. Um, you know, LGBT communities, uh, POC communities are really coming out and saying that already it's hard enough being an adult worker and a POC person and a transgender person and facing all the marginalization that folks face, like Prop 60 will just put the power in the hands of those who wish us ill. And people are very concerned. Um, the Adult Performer Advocacy Committee, which is the only you know organization that really it has the largest membership. They have about 600 or 700 uh, members, and they have spoken out vehemently against this you know since May, um, as it will threaten our safety and violate our privacy. Uh, we also have an amazing coalition of uh, folks from across the board. You know, I mentioned those key political parties, but also the San Francisco AIDS Foundation, Equality California, AIDS Project LA, um, and more and more. I, I'll pull up uh, the website one more time before we log off. Um, this, I, like I said, this document is a little bit old, uh, but we have really seen people coming to our defense and, and standing with us because they see that Prop 60 will enforce the criminalization of the adult industry through incentivized harassment of an already marginalized workforce. It's misguided, poorly drafted, and it's dangerous. Um, so if you want to get involved, please, please, please follow FSC Army, follow vote, uh, no Prop 60, and here, let me pull up, hold on, uh, go to stop60.com for more information as well, and we'll go ahead and end on that screen. Um, hold on. And then we can go to questions. Um, I, hi, everyone, again. <laughs> um, let me pull up. 
Disney's Top 60 website once again. Uh, we have a bunch of really exciting things coming up, and uh, we would love to have you get involved. So if you go to stop60.com, go to Get Involved. There's all kinds of things you can do to help spread the word, submit an endorsement, donate to the campaign, or get other people you know to donate to the campaign, post to your website, submit a video, volunteer. We're doing, um, oh, Folsom Street Fair is over now, but we're doing a university tour and going all over. So you can sign up here at the website. Um, also, please, if you want to change your social media avatar and shit, you can request one here. You can follow us on Twitter and, you know, become part of the movement. We even have uh, special pre-made tweets for you that will take you right to your own social media and you won't have to do anything except click twice. So, um, yeah, that's kind of the nuts and bolts. I would love to answer any questions that people may have um, or dive in a little bit deeper to some of the more nuanced arguments. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and thank you so much for joining us, Susie Q. Um, so um, the, the first question, I guess, that I have is, um, have there been any similar bills to this regulating other industries, and um, what were the effects of similar bills, um, you know, that, that allow for these kinds of lawsuits? What were the, those effects on, on other industries? So, to my understanding, the answer is no. Uh, this is pretty unprecedented, and that's why we have such a, you know, odd bedfellows such as the Republican Party and the Democratic Party and the Libertarian Party, uh, folks who have historically maybe had some ambivalence about our industry. Uh, you know, they see that this kind of precedent uh, is a very dangerous one to set. That allow allowing expanding private right of action and allowing any person without injury, without uh, you know, any any stake in the process to go ahead and sue, and not only sue, but then receive a 25% kickback or finder's fee. Um, I think the only reason that this piece of legislation is even being considered, I mean, there's of course the broken California proposition system in that anyone with enough money can get something on the ballot, which is what happened with Proposition 60. Uh, you know, I think that the only reason that people are kind of engaging in the conversation is because of the stigma associated with our work. It's like, well, you have to speak for and, you know, criminalize those people, right? But I think that perception is slowly shifting. Um, now, legislation like this has definitely happened in the past. Uh, this is, you know, same story, different day. Um, but this is the first time that it's gone to a statewide ballot. So in uh, measure B happened several years ago in Los Angeles County. It was a very similar measure. It did not have the lawsuit component, though. So um, it it was it was different in that respect, and it did pass by a narrow margin here in LA County. The result of that was staggering, however. Um, so we saw in LA County a um, huge drop in the uh, issuing of adult film production permits. Uh, it was, in, I think, a 90 or a 95% drop. So that really shows that absolutely the adult film uh, industry moved out of Los Angeles County, started filming elsewhere. Uh, the, the county lost money. The county lost jobs, not just adult film production jobs, county jobs. Uh, and we will see something very similar happen in California. Uh, under Prop 60, you moving out of state the way the law is written won't necessarily protect performers, uh, even if they already move out of state and film there. Uh, this could really, even if they're in complete compliance, even if they do, you know, use condoms, they, if it's not visible in every frame, and even if it is, the way the law is written, you would have to take the lawsuit all the way to discovery and defend it in court and spend several thousand dollars just in order to say, I didn't do anything wrong. Uh, so this is not about Keeping, closing loopholes and keeping people safe. This is incentivized harassment, and it's designed to go after our industry and our and our workers. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know, Susie, you talked a little bit about the financial impact or the impact on um, I'm assuming tax revenue in California, 
Um, I'm assuming there's also a cost of these uh, of lawsuits. Are, has there been any, any analysis about what um, what are the numbers looking like in terms of how this will affect, uh, yeah, California's uh, state revenue yeah. purse? The LAO, which is the Legislative Analysts Office, and they are a nonpartisan uh, office, and they, they it's their job to look at propositions and analyze what the fiscal impact will be. And they have estimated that, yes, indeed, tens of millions of dollars will be lost to the state if Prop 60 passes. Uh, that's not a number that we're throwing out and hyperbolizing that comes from a, a nonpartisan entity. Uh, and, yeah, simply it will cost the state millions. and. I don't know. Last last time I checked, California doesn't have that. We're not we're not nailing it on the on the fiscal uh, front. So it, it, the state really can't afford it. I keep telling people, you know, there's all these nuanced arguments about Prop 60 and why it's wrong uh, because of you know the criminalization of our industry and how it's going to impact working class workers like myself. But also, you know, when someone is not ready to engage on those arguments, I say. Hey, less jobs, more lawsuits. Is that what California needs? I don't think so. You know, it, in, a, in a time such as this, we, we can't afford it. And uh, it's not within our values either. It's not like, I think a lot of people, even if they don't have um, a strong opinion on the adult industry and its workers, they often see propositions at 60 and say, why are we voting on that? Uh, because that's not how, workers worker safety that's not in the that shouldn't be in the hands of the voters um and moreover lawsuits is not the way that you regulate something uh taking it out of the uh designated body designated to to regulate workplace safety and putting that in the courts it just doesn't make any sense yeah i, I absolutely agree um and then I, I checked out your website, and there's a really broad group of adult film performers and um, political parties, uh, nonprofits that are opposing this bill. Um, are there any organizations that are supporting it, and what do you think their motives are, or why? What is interest in Prop 60? Why, why would anyone support this bill? So the main supporter of the bill um, are the proponents, and uh, I, they've actually had uh, several, uh, some legal trouble uh, along the road of putting uh, folks under the, uh, under the support side falsely. There's, uh, they've made several false claims. One perfect example is the San Francisco Medical Society, they claimed was uh, in support of Prop 60. We, the, the, once the San Francisco Medical Society caught wind of that, they said, no, 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 no. We did not take a vote. We did not support Prop 60. And they're actually on our side now. They are, here they are, our opposition. San Francisco Medical Society are, are in fact, no Prop 60. So I'd be very, the ones that they have listed are, I'm not entirely sure uh, why or how. There's not very, and they've definitely like uh, falsely listed endorsements. They also currently have a long, long list of folks, and this happened yesterday on the KQBD debate, um, started listing off a long list of folks that supported the idea of using barrier protection in adult mm -hmm. film. Those people have not endorsed Prop 60, but they have in, like endorsed the idea of condoms in adult film. And so the yes side has gotten, you know, you can't really go after them legally for saying that it's like yes that's true but those aren't endorsements and they're doing everything in, in their power to sort of sidestep around that issue um and list that long list of people as like actual but those people are not endorsing prop 60 they have endorsed perhaps legislation like it in the past perhaps simply the idea of using barrier protection in adult film uh but not endorse prop 60 because prop 60 and contains this super, super problematic lawsuit component, and it puts people's privacy at risk, and that just can't stand. So they're, they're ha they've had some trouble uh, getting people to actually endorse it. Luckily, they have all of the money in the world. Well, not really, but they have sunk about $3 million into the Yes on Prop 60 campaign alone. I mean, they've been buying... Uh, commercials during primetime Olympics and during the debate, you know, we don't have that kind of money. We are a grassroots organization and 
think what's most troubling is that money that AIDS Healthcare Foundation is spending on the Yes on Prop 60 campaign, that money is supposed to go to people living with HIV. That's supposed to go to a population that really needs it. Like HIV funding is just getting more and more expensive every year. And in, in the general population in the past 12 years, there's been over 600,000 transmissions of HIV. How many of them have happened on adult film sets? Zero. Self-regulated adult film, like the past system that we have developed works. Why yeah. are we millions of dollars into somewhere that like when other folks so need it there's so i mean you you all know you all work in harm reduction and are on the front lines of of this you know as we're dealing with this disease and it's it, it truthfully it makes my blood boil like as a queer person and as like a sex worker knowing how much that money is needed in communities that need it and just seeing it just be flushed down the toilet going after adult film it's just maddening yeah ab absolutely and you know the thing I found interesting that you that you said is that all of these groups maybe might like certain like the idea of condoms in porn I remember talking to um hello darling it's like she likes the idea of of more protection for adult workers or adult worker rights but this is not the bill and I remember something Ella darling said on the last webinar um was that you can't vote for an awful bill, um, that the, the bill is flawed in, in totality. So even if you like parts of it, right, the fact that this bill would allow individuals, anyone in the state of California, to really sue any adult film performer, um, uh, you know, and, and even if they, they are using condoms in this film, right, like there's, there's, it's still massively expensive to defend yourself in a lawsuit, but this bill um, is, is a nightmare, you know, and it's bringing together a bunch of people who may like specific parts of the bill. Um, you know, another something, another thing that you mentioned is that the AIDS Healthcare Foundation is spending a ton of money on this. Um, so, uh, you know, I guess that, that brings us to, I guess, my, my final question. How can people get involved? Um, how can sort of grassroots volunteerism and uh, you know, people watching this webinar now or watching the replay, how can they help? So, um, yeah, this is a grassroots effort. The AHF is, uh, is, is Trump and we are Bernie. Um, and we're, we're going to win, though. We're going to win. So uh, there's a lot of ways to get involved. Social media is really important. All kinds of media is really important. We really have to uh, go the, the grassroots method in this. We can't afford to buy primetime slots on the Olympics, but we do have a bunch of exciting uh, media savvy sex work people who have, you know, it's that classic thing of because we, our work is criminalized and marginalized, we have to get really scrappy and survivally about how we, we market ourselves and we do a bunch of different hats. And I think that's really paying off in this campaign. You know, we have people who are very social media savvy, who know how to make quick, uh, you know, shareable video content and all of that. You know, if you can get people to pay for adult films on the internet when it's so easy to get things for free, we can definitely do this. So I'm gonna go back to my screen share and share the, uh, go to stop60.com is the website that has all of the info of how you can um, get involved on social media and also in person. Like I said, we um, are just kicked off yesterday our um, university tour. We went to UCLA uh, to the free speech area and you know, handed out pamphlets. We have about 16 other actions at different colleges up and down the state. So if you want to be involved in you know, old fashioned, hand out pamphlets in the free speech area of a university, we definitely need that. If you have local news outlets that you are in touch with, if you have Democrat, Democratic or political party or clubs that you are involved with, tell everyone you know about why Prop 60 is dangerous for the workers that it will affect. Um, you can find out more at this website, you know, share these things on social media, get into a fight on Facebook about it. Um, and, you know, I really think it takes, it's voter by voter. And the polls 
that we have are showing that support for Prop 60 is dwindling. It's dropped about 20 points since they're for, from poll to poll. They've done two polls so far, and it's dropped about 20 points in support. So we can really do this. And that's before we had all the newspapers come out. Um, that's before all the Democratic slate mailers have gone out. Uh, we have a lot of uh, cards still to play, but we need all hands on deck. So I encourage you to go to Prop 60 or go to uh, stop60.com, find out how to get involved, volunteer, share on social media, make a video, call everyone you know, tell everyone you know, be sure to um, register to vote. That's the most important part. Register to vote by um, October 24th is the is the deadline to register to vote vote on november 8th make sure that everyone you know can vote uh if that takes carpooling phone trees make sure that um the people who are going to vote know on 60 get to their polling places and and do the thing and i think we can we really have a shot of defeating this thing and then i'm so excited for what comes next, because regardless of how Prop 60 goes, and I really do think we have a chance of defeating it, but regardless, moving forward, we have this incredible coalition now. And what are we gonna do now that we have had something that we've worked on with the California Democratic Party, the, Republic, the Republican Party, the Libertarian Party, the Harvey Milk Democratic Club, the Quakers, the Friends of the Legislative Body, um, Woodhull Freedom Foundation, San Francisco Medical Society, AIDS, AIDS uh, uh, Project Los Angeles, all of these things, we, I really want us to continue thinking about how we build on those relationships and move forward with what kind of legislation we, we want to see as sex workers for our community and for our people um, for the future. So um, if you ever have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Uh, Susie at Free Speech Coalition, FSC Army on Twitter, uh, Vote No Prop 60 on Twitter as well. And of course, you can always find me um, on my website, thewhorecast.com. Awesome. Thank any you. Other yeah, thank you so much, Susie. You know, there's one, um, we, we got one last question from the audience. Um, is there a citation for that figure about the loss of work um, that, that uh, people can show? Is that going to be on the No Prop 60 website or Don't Harass California? Let me see. Hold on. I'm not sure if that is. But, you know, if you um, enter your email address, whoever had that question, I can get you uh, an article about that. The, the loss of jobs... Um, I believe is anecdotal evidence from someone who knew someone who worked in, in the office, but the, uh, the drop, the 95% drop in adult film permits in uh, LA County post measure B, that's been documented by several news. I mean, honestly, if you just Google like measure B drop in adult film permits, you'll come up with a bunch of articles. It was very well reported on. Um, but I believe the, the piece about uh, the loss of, county jobs. That was an anecdotal piece of evidence, I think, from Julia Ann. So I'll follow up with her about that, and I'm happy to give you that information. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you, everyone, for joining us and who's watching this in the future. Um, one uh, quick thing, if you could just give a 30-second overview of what the bill is, and then we can close up. Uh, that would be great. Absolutely. Um, hold on one second. So Prop 60 is purports to be about safer sex in the adult film industry, but it's actually about incentivized harassment of an already marginalized workforce. It will enable any resident of California to sue an adult worker, thereby gaining access to our legal names and home addresses. For our workforce, which already faces alarming rates of stalking and discrimination, this cannot stand. It will cost California millions, it's not safe for workers, and the workers who will be affected by Prop 60 are begging you and imploring you to vote no. Find out more at stop60.com. All right, thank you so much, and thanks for everyone for, for joining us. Um, let's yes, eat this bill together.